Mesdames et messieurs, bonsoir et bienvenue sur ce stream. Ce n'est pas un ASMR, non, 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 oh, non, 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 c'est vampire, bien sûr. C'est vampire. Pour ceux qui ne sont jamais venus, installez-vous confortablement, éteignez toutes les lumières autour de vous, mettez votre casque, enfilez votre casque, montez le son, montez le son. Et je répète tout en double, hein, c'est mieux, c'est beaucoup mieux. Et laissez-vous transporter par l'ambiance de vampire. Alors, tu vas m'afficher le jeu, voilà, merci. C'est très gentil de ta part. Ah, vous faites comme moi, vous mettez dans le noir, tranquillement, et là vous écoutez. Le petit violon. Ok, c'est parti. Donc, nous étions nous arrêtés. Et bien on vient de parler à Lady. Elisabeth Ashbury. Et on allait aller au club Ascalon. Ascalon, faire des petites parties de poker entre vampires. Normal quoi. Non, voilà. Se présenter au club d'Ascalon. Par contre, on a vu. On a vu sur notre map, on l'a vu ça. Vous l'avez tous vu. Bon là, tout le monde est mort donc c'est pas la peine de regarder. Mais et là, nouveau dialogue disponible. Et là, nouveau dialogue disponible. Oui, messieurs, dames. Oui, oui, oui. Avant d'aller dans le West End. Si on allait reparler à la dadam. La dadam de la 12. Alors, c'est parti. On va parler à Lady Ashbury parce qu'un nouveau dialogue semble disponible. Ça fait plaisir. Je n'ai pas pu fouiller la maison. Il y a une belle demeure. Un peu du sang, euh, les petites traces là. Hein. Cache des trucs ou pas Attention. Moi je suis. Je suis le spectateur invisible, comme dirait un certain personnage. En l'honneur de Lady Ashbury, éternelle source d'inspiration, il y a beaucoup d'obscurité dans la vie, mais il y a aussi des sources de lumière. Vous êtes une lumière plus belle d'entre toutes, Rob Stoker. LOL. Dracula, Bram Stoker. C'est right. Lady Ashbury. Très bien. Source d'inspiration de Dracula, c'est elle. Elle a inspiré Bram Stoker. Ah, oh, c'est tout. Et puis c'est... Ou alors c'est elle, Bram Stoker. C'est son nom de plume. C'est elle qui a écrit Dracula. Elle se fait des remerciements. Elle a... Notre tragédie de nuit sanglante. Ah, c'est où le truc, là Tragédie de nuit sanglante. On avait arrêté de lire ces derniers temps, mais là, on va s'y remettre. Ah, c'est important de lire. Nous sommes atrocement peu à avoir échappé à la grande chasse. Je fais partie de ces survivants. Je me rappelle comme, comment l'attaque surprise de l'ennemi nous a tous pris de court. Le sang a coulé au cours de ces quelques nuits. Certains d'entre nous qui ont survécu ont choisi l'exil. Je ne leur en veux pas. Mais je déplore leur manque de force d'âme. Car c'est bien de courage que nous avons besoin pour protéger les intérêts de l'Empire et pour protéger les valeurs que nous défendons. Souvenons-nous bien que William Marshall, lui, n'a jamais baissé la tête. Mon très cher créateur est peut-être parti depuis bien longtemps, mais sa présence se fait toujours sentir parmi nous. Nous conserverons quelques gouttes de son sang sacré pour nous rappeler ce que nous sommes et ce à quoi nous aspirons. L'honneur, la pureté et l'excellence. Étant sa descendance et son ami, j'ai eu l'honneur d'échanger avec le chevalier à maintes reprises. Il m'a parlé des larmes des anges, le breuvage sacré censé apaiser la, apaiser la faim insatiable que nous ressentons tous, qu'il a cherché sans relâche, sans même savoir si un tel artefact existait. J'admirais alors sa persévérance. C'est cette ténacité, cette croyance, indéfectible en quelque chose de plus grand que nous, qui nous permettra de survivre à toute nouvelle grande chasse organisée par nos ennemis. Ascalon renaîtra de ses cendres, toujours, car il est un idéal. Issu de la loi d'Ascalon par l'ordre Redgrave, le fondateur. Ah, J'espère que vous aimez ma lecture. Je fais des efforts afin que ça paraisse moins robotique et moins pourri à chaque lecture. Je tente une amélioration, une ponctuation à l'accent. Qu'est-ce qui se passe Les éclairs de lumière de la mode. Oh mon dieu. Il faut, il faut changer tout ça. C'est la télé Qui a osé allumer la télé Je ressurgis depuis les ombres. Alors qu'est-ce qu'elle fait 
Elle me dessine, elle me sauve, tranquille. Tu vas demander ma part de mission On va pas être pote tous les deux. D'ailleurs, je vais aller en bas fouiller un petit peu avant de te parler. Permet. Hein, voilà, ça. Merci. C'est pour moi. Alors, ça aussi, c'est pour moi. Hello. Mais t'as deux pianos Mais c'est quoi ce délire Pourquoi t'as deux pianos T'as la flemme de bouger 9 mai. Ce soir, je suis allé rendre visite aux malades de l'East End avec ma mère. Cela faisait longtemps que je n'étais pas allé dans cette triste partie de la ville. L'avoir parlé avec ces pauvres gens et surtout les écouter m'a véritablement bouleversé. Elle essaie vraiment de leur venir en aide et de faire quelque chose d'utile pour tous ces hommes et ces femmes. Elle a également tué l'un d'eux ce soir. C'est arrivé si vite que j'ai à peine eu le temps de remarquer son absence. Mais lorsqu'elle a répa reparu, elle avait l'air bien plus vivante et bien plus fraîche. J'ai immédiatement compris ce qui était arrivé. Elle a ôté la vie à quelqu'un. Et je n'ai rien vu. Nous sommes rentrés sans dire un mot. Si jamais je deviens comme elle, je refuse de me nourrir des mourants. Je tuerai les criminels et les brutes où qu'ils se cachent. C'était en 1913. Un an plus tard, cet après-midi, deux hommes ont essayé de m'agresser alors que je militais pour le droit de vote des femmes. J'ai appelé à l'aide aussi fort que j'ai pu comme ma mère m'a dit de le faire. Je ne sais pas ce qui me serait arrivé si un soldat ne leur avait pas ordonné de me laisser tranquille. Il m'a ensuite raccompagné chez moi et a essayé de m'embrasser. J'ai refusé. Il est parti sans rien dire. Toute cette histoire m'a rendu si triste que je pleurais encore lorsque ma mère s'est réveillée. Le soir venu, je lui ai raconté ce qui s'était passé et elle m'a prise dans ses bras. Puis, nous sommes allés au théâtre pour voir la nouvelle pièce de Doris Fletcher. Je pense que je suis un peu déçu que mère ne soit pas immédiatement sortie pour aller punir tous ces malotrus. Si j'étais un vampire, je ne serais pas aussi clémente. Deux jours plus tard, mère et moi avons eu un terri une terrible dispute la nuit dernière, car elle a encore refusé de faire de moi une immortelle. Lorsque je lui ai appelé ce qui m'était arrivé le jour précédent avec ces deux hommes et ce que j'aurais pu faire si j'avais été comme elle, ou bien ce qui se serait passé s'ils avaient eu des armes, elle a simplement souri et m'a dit que faire partie de ce que faire partie de ce monde, pardon, voulait aussi dire être prête à l'affronter. Je ne suis pas certaine de comprendre ce qu'elle veut dire. Mais en tout cas, cela me rend folle de rage. J'ai quitté notre domicile au beau milieu de la nuit, et je suis allé chez Emily. Puis j'y ai passé la journée. Il est peut-être temps pour moi de quitter la maison et de vivre ma vie, comme Emily. J'aime tant ma mère, mais cela m'aime vraiment qu'elle refuse même de parler de ma conversation. Un an plus tard, ce soir, je suis aussi triste qu'excité, car je suis sur le point de quitter cette maison pour de bon. Mère a accepté de me laisser prendre un appartement dans le West End, tant qu'il n'était pas trop éloigné de sa maison. Je lui ai promis d'être très prudente, je lui ai dit que je l'aimais énormément, et elle m'a dit qu'elle était fière de moi. Je comprends désormais qu'elle veut simplement que je devienne une femme aussi forte et aussi indépendante qu'elle. Je dois admettre que je lui suis vraiment reconnaissante pour tout ce qu'elle m'a appris au cours de ces années. Elle a fait de moi la femme que je suis aujourd'hui. Maintenant, il est temps pour moi de choisir ma propre voie. Quoi que je décide de faire de ma vie, tous les choix m'appartiennent. Je sais simplement une chose. Si je décide de devenir un immortel, je ne parlerai pas à ma mère de ce choix. C'est ma vie et je suis responsable de mes propres actes. Okay. Charlotte Ashbury. Elle ah, a de la famille. Elle a de la famille. Elle a une fille surtout. Surtout elle a une fille Avec qui est-ce qu'elle l'a fait Allez, parlons. Hello again, Jonathan. To what do I owe the pleasure of your visit? Sorry to disturb you again, but could you spare me a few minutes? Of course, my dear. Always a pleasure to speak with you. Do you think we shall ever see better days? Or at least better nights? I know not, Jonathan. I have seen some horrid days in my long lifetime. Experience has taught me that one cannot outrun the fates. Will you tell me your story one day, Lady Ashbury? One of them, perhaps. I have had so many lives, Jonathan. Eternity may not be enough to relate them all. When all of this is over, the war and the epidemic, we could leave the city for a while. Travel around Europe, you and I. Traveling is always so complicated for us poor creatures of the night. But yes, I would be glad to travel the world with you, my dear. Concerning your investigation... Yes? Are you truly seeking to identify my maker? 
I cannot promise you anything, but yes, I am conducting some research of my own. Do you know if the epidemic has affected many people in the West End? I confess I've been more concerned by events in the East End. The wealthy have more efficient ways of dealing with infection. But this is no common epidemic. That is true. I must tell my daughter to stay at home for a few days. But the girl is stubborn and fiercely independent. Much like her mother. Goodbye. C'est tout ce que tu avais à me dire, mais c'est de la... Parce que, hein, tu vois ce que je veux dire C'est de la... c'est de la merde, quoi Hein Si on veut être mal poli, on peut dire ça comme ça Et sinon, pour être poli, qu'est-ce qu'on pourrait dire À la place de c'est de la merde. On va dire que c'est des queues de cerises, voilà, c'est des queues de cerises. Voilà. Bon. Je pense qu'on va avancer dans la quête. On ira parler au Docteur Swansea après. Parce qu'on a aussi un dialogue avec le Docteur Swansea qui a été débloqué. On l'a vu sur la map. Sur la map Time to visit the Là, tout de suite, nous allons voir voilà, effectivement le Ascalon Club. Très belle voiture, hein, voilà, oh, magnifique, euh, très beau rouge. Alors, ah, petite claquette. Qui fait des claquettes Aimez-vous Aimez-vous I cannot enter. Ah, mais moi, j'ai laissé passer, moi, monsieur. Comment je peux passer où je veux Bon alors faut que je passe par ailleurs c'est ça. Je suis condamné. Voilà il y a des traces de ce truc là. Ok. Hop, ils sont montés. Ok j'esquive le combat de ça. J'esquive le combat ou bien je le bouffe. Boum T'es un fou toi mon gars. T'as bien vu que j'étais niveau 32 et toi niveau 24. Non, tu l'as pas vu, mais c'est pas grave. Imagine-le. Imagine-toi, ne serait-ce qu'une seconde. Il n'y a pas le niveau. Il n'y a pas le niveau. Ah, c'est bien ça. Tout ce que j'en ai, c'est très très bien. Oh, c'est très très bien. Oh, oui, oh. C'est bon ça. Alors, c'est par ici. Hein. Suivez-moi, je, je vous montre le chemin. C'est par là. Ah, les petites traces de sang. Oh, lui, il a pris cher. C'est right. fermé de ce côté. Très, très bien. C'est toujours un plaisir de... Ah, qui vomit C'est toi Ah, ça vomit ici. Ah, ah. Trop bu. L'alcool, c'est mal. Ça, se téléporte. Ah, bah, c'est bon, ça. Ok, il est pas mort. Je dire, il est mort. Oh Dieu. Ouais, ben, bah, rien. T'as été imprudent. Oh, il y a une liste, c'est la suite d'un point de désinformation, effectivement. Est-ce qu'il faut que je... La carte, elle est où alors, faut plutôt que j'aille là-bas. Par là-bas, je suppose. Là, je peux ouvrir à droite. It's locked. Que dalle, je peux pas voir. Elle m'énerve, elle, mais tais-toi, tais-toi, arrête de. Oh Arrête pas. Alors là, à gauche. Yes, c'est par là. The West End. Never have I felt so sad to be back home. C'est la maison. Oh, c'est la maison. C'est la maison. Faut grand mère malgré. On les croque. Oh, 
Boom. Ça le fout. Tiens, PS3, que voulez-vous Big Hop, il y a un refus, c'est ça Ah non, Reed, eh mais c'est chez moi. This is my home. This is my home. Le manoir Reed. Yes. Trop bien. Je ferai ma maison. Rien à donner ici. Très bien. Là. Je peux améliorer ça Pas du tout. Je peux améliorer ça. Est-ce qu'on peut améliorer ce gourdin Non plus. Est-ce que je peux améliorer ce, ce fusil peut-être Ah, on peut améliorer le fusil. Et là, je vais vous montrer quoi Les points d'impact peut-être Il fait déjà assez de dégâts, je pense. Il faut 5 rivets en plus. Ça, pff, je m'en fous, je veux le vendre, ça je veux le vendre, ça je veux le garder. Je vais l'augmenter, il manque un petit morceau. Là, il manque quoi du coup Il manque un morceau de poignet. Ça c'est nul, le gourdin de ses mots, peut-être qu'il est bien, on sait pas encore. Faut, faut qu'on l'augmente pour voir. Ok. Très très bien, si on va là, qu'est-ce qui se passe mais, mais bonjour. Vous êtes le majordome Good Arsène, evening, Avery. Mr. Jonathan. I can't believe my own eyes. Oh. You have come back too late, sir. Far too late. I know, Avery. I know about Mary and my mother. I'm so sorry. It was my duty to watch over her. She left the house in the middle of the night. The police said... It's all right, Avery. The police said her body was found near your sister's grave in Whitechapel. You're the master of the house now. I'd understand if you fired me, sir. Alors non seulement je n'ai pas de congédier, mais en plus, mon cher ami, tu seras le seul que j'ai parlé. Do you need hein. medical attention? I won't... Je ne te tuerai. Oh, thank you. Je le, mon cher Avery. Pas le seul qui survivra. <rire> I'm sorry I could not be here for Mary's funeral. Your mother was strong, sir, but your support would have been appreciated. Apart from the priest and I, no one else attended your sister's funeral. To be present at the funeral with you both was my dearest wish, Avery. But I'm sorry, I simply could not attend. I would not dare to question your absence, Mr. Jonathan. All I can say is that we missed you a great deal during these difficult days. What is the situation in this part of town? For a time, the West End seems spared by the epidemic. But the situation is getting much worse. Have you no relatives anywhere? I'll understand if you want to take a few days to see family. Your father managed to guarantee my earnings as long as I take care of this house, sir. My sisters are dead, and I've never met my nephews. I'll stay, sir. How was life in this house while I was away? It was sad, sir. Miss Mary moved here in July after she lost her baby and husband. So I stayed to serve both her and your mother. How was my mother? Miss Reed was very frail. After Miss Mary was found dead, your mother started talking to herself. She said she was speaking to the dead. She even said that she had seen you. How was Mary? Miss Mary went out looking for you every night after you had written to say that you were coming back. She was sure you were alive. She'll never know she was right. What are the arrangements for my mother's funeral? There will be no funeral, sir. No ceremony whatsoever because of the sanitary situation. Where is her body then? I'm afraid your mother's body was moved to a mass grave somewhere. I have no other information. Civil service is paralyzed, sir. And London is crumbling down.
Tell me the truth, Avery. Do you feel forced to stay here? Would you leave this house without the arrangement made by my father? No, sir. I have nowhere else to go. And I promised your father I'd take care of his family as long as I live. This house is dead, Avery. There is a curse on this family. You really should consider leaving. If only you could have been here sooner or more often. Maybe this house would not be that empty. But you're here now, sir. So my task is not over. Considering the recent tragedies in this family, I'd understand if you want to leave or decide to serve another house. Then I will stay. All I ask is that you take care of my own funeral if I die before the end of the epidemic. No mass grave, please, sir. Do you really think I neglected my mother, Avery? Yes. I see. Well, please go on, speak freely. It's not as if there is anything left to treasure in this house. Just like your father. You always had this capacity to focus only on what interests you. It surely helped you become a great doctor, but not such a great son. Thank you. Your bed. 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 Your Il aura rien de fermé. Tu vois, genre ça, ça va pas être lock. It's locked, Parce que c'est ma maison Tu vois ce que je veux dire C'est tellement honteux, ça. C'est scandaleux. Les portes verrouillées dans ma maison, chez moi. Chez moi Ah, une vieille lettre. Alors, il mon cher Avery. Comme je vous l'ai dit il y a plusieurs jours, je vais être obligé de quitter l'Angleterre au moins pour quelques mois pendant mon absence. Pendant un instant, c'est temps que mon fils ne revient pas à Londres. À Londres Je voudrais vous confier notre maison. J'ai déjà fait tout ce qu'il fallait pour augmenter votre salaire et m'assurer que vous le perceviez tant que vous remplissiez votre tâche. Vous m'avez promis de protéger ma chère femme et de la servir du mieux que vous le pouviez. Je vous remercie du fond du cœur pour cela. Vous êtes la seule et unique personne. La seule et unique personne en qui je puisse avoir confiance durant cette absence. Soyez rassurés, soyez assurés de mes sentiments les plus amicaux. Aubrey Raid. Mon papa. Mon papa a laissé une lettre. Est-ce que mon papa serait pas un vampire hein 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 Donc ce serait la solution de facilité. Mais d'accord. Que le papa soit un vampire. Hein papa vampire, voilà. Mais, 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 est-ce que justement... La facilité n'était-elle pas la solution On va sortir. Alors du coup j'ai fait tout le tour de la ville, là, comme, un, comme, un, comme un imbécile, là, dire attends. Je vais m'insulter. Le club, le cœur de la société de vampire britannique. Pas si as subtil que je pensais. Ah si je bouffe ça, c'est fait quoi Please forgive me for disturbing you. I'm a doctor. I never judge a man by his title, but by his attitude. And you are not disturbing me at all. I am Calhoun Russell, and I welcome you. Well, I must admit, it's good to receive a warm welcome for once. I'm Doctor. I'm Jonathan Reed. Welcome, Doctor Reed. Welcome to my humble shop. What can you tell me about this place? I recently found the best steak and kidney pie in the city. <laughs> I'd be glad to share the address if you want. Finding a good restaurant? Is that really all that interests you? Oh, I have many passions, but nothing brings me ecstasy like subtle and exquisite flavors from my teeth to my belly. I must confess, I have quite specific tastes when it comes to nutrition. Really? Well, I'm always happy to try new exotic meals. If you ever find an intriguing table, please share the address. 
How is the situation in this part of town? Life is good and peaceful. We're lucky to live in such an era of progress and wonders. Are you not concerned about the epidemic? Oh, I'm sure the authorities would take the appropriate measure if the danger were that high. You cannot expect the newspapers to expose the truth while the war is still raging. I can assure you that the situation here is desperate. Well, that's news then. But I can't believe that things are that bad. Are you sure you're not exaggerating a bit? For the thrill of it? Is it not a little too late to be trading? On the contrary, it is the perfect hour. Believe me, my friend, it is always at night that you meet the most fascinating characters. But what about the epidemic? The bombs and raids? And all the random violence? Please, sir, this is London, England. We will prevail. And if a bomb must fall on my shop, then I'll be there to hear it falling. So you prefer to work at night? Oh, I also enjoy a sunny day like everybody else. But the night always has a certain je ne sais quoi of its own. Petit je ne sais quoi. Très bien. Do you have any family nearby? Not since my parents died. I'm London's lone gourmet. Really? But you seem to be such a pleasant and sociable fellow. I'm afraid the real hedonist has to be sometimes. I discovered ecstasy as a solitary pleasure, but it does not mean it can't ever be shared. London's Lone Gourmet. What a strange title. I used that name in my early years when I was a food critic, and I kept it. No, I made... Et j'ai plus de place, euh, je peux te rendre quoi Je peux te rendre que le gourdin C'est chiant. May I have your attention, please? Come on, Johnny. Don't you recognize your oldest friend? Clarence. Clarence Crossley. How are you? My God. So you survived the war, too. So sorry I didn't recognize you at first. I almost didn't recognize you, either. War does that to men, I heard. In my case, it was true, for... I witnessed the horror that lies underneath. Ouais, ça va être compliqué là. J'ai pas envie, j'ai envie de bouffer personne dans ce quartier. Parce que entre l'ami d'enfance, euh, la fille, euh, la fille de, de la peau de vampire, le majordome euh, qui est comme une famille, quoi. C'est, <rire> on va bouffer personne. On ne va bouffer personne. Alors, un instant, je dois répondre à un SMS. Alors, hop, je fais au plus vite, ne vous inquiétez pas, ça va être rapide. Non, une pipe. Hop. Ouais. Tac, alors, code 9, Johnny, c'est pas Johnny. When did you escape the war and return to London? You know what's funny? I almost never think about the war. Not anymore. I'm involved in another kind of battle now. I know what you mean. I haven't had much time to think about the war either since my return. Of course. With the epidemic, I bet you've been busy as well. Forgive me, Johnny. I, I didn't want to sound selfish. Thank you, Mick. What is this new battle? Well, I saw terrible things during the war. Horrors I thought I'd forget. They're here, too. They're everywhere. 
vampires. How is your wife, Venus? We've spent so much time away from each other. So many things have happened. But you're alive. You returned in one piece and you have a family. How many soldiers can say the same? Believe me, it's not quite that simple. Unlike you, I'm not the man I used to be. Is everything all right at home? Surely Venus was relieved to see you return from France in one piece. Have you forgot what people are like in this part of town, Johnny? Venus fears for our family reputation. Now her husband has become the village idiot. Do you need medical? What I hope. You need some. Women die too in this war. Good evening, Miss. Oh my God, no! Please, Mr. Vampire, don't kill me. Please, no. I'm too young to die. I still have so much to offer this world. Wait, no. Why do you think I would... What? Don't worry, Dr. Reed. I know you wouldn't harm me. Mother told me you were in this part of town and might drop by. Your mother? My name is Charlotte, sir. Charlotte Ashbury. My mother taught me long ago how to recognize the signs that betray a vampire. I understand she also taught you how to tease and gently mock innocent young Ekons. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Charlotte. Mmh. Ah, la 5. 5 au niveau de chat. On sait jamais, hein. Si un jour on est à tuer sa mère, on pourrait peut-être. Nous en attendrons, étant donné qu'on fait copain copain avec sa mère, on va éviter de tuer la fille. Tell me about your adoption. What do you want to know? How did you meet Lady Ashbury? First, I was an orphan in the institution for girls she manages in the West End. When I was ten, she adopted me, and I have lived with her ever since. Did you know she was a vampire when she picked you? The correct word is Ekon, Doctor. And no, I had no idea why my mother only showed up at night. She told me everything when I turned 16. Though I suspected the truth for a long time before that. Who are your real parents? Elizabeth Ashbury is my real mother. She raised me and has taken care of me all my life. I have no idea who my progenitors are or were. Do you live with her? I still spend a lot of time in my mother's mansion. But I have my own house now. I have a life to live, you see. And one day, I'll have my death to face. What do you think about this part of town? I was raised here, and I suppose it feels like home. You grew up in this part of town too, did you not? Yes, I was born a few streets away. A small world, is it not? Did you ever imagine that my mother was your neighbor all that time? That you could have met her in a dark alley at night. You won't trick me twice, young lady. We both know Lady Ashbury never hunts or attacks prey at random. Come on, Doctor. Don't tell me you never thought about that possibility. Her fangs on your neck. Oh, are you blushing, Doctor Reed? Is there something that's bothering you? Too much selfishness and individualism for my taste. Even when there was no epidemic. Even if that's partly true, may I remind you that many charitable institutions are financed by the selfish and filthy rich. I suppose you're right. But society must reform and renew itself or we are all done for. What are you doing out here? You mean, what do I do outside at night since I am a woman? Let me ask you a question, sir. Would you ask the same question of a man? Actually, yes. I ask the same question to everyone who dares to go outside at night, considering the risks. Well, if you must know, I campaign for the right to vote for all women. Why should I wait to the age of 30 years when men can vote at 21? Are you a suffragette, then? Oh, you really are, Elizabeth's girl. Without a doubt. All adult women have the right to vote in the US, in New Zealand, and in Australia. But women here can't vote unless they are property owners. No need to convince me, Miss Charlotte. I have shared your opinion for a long time. 
Even before I met Emmeline Pankhurst. Really? Oh. Now I see why my mother appreciates you so much. Too bad there aren't more men like you in the vicinity. How are the locals reacting to your claims? People here can't wait for a wall to be built to isolate the West End from the rest of town. That's how progressive they are. If this happens, Emily and I will blow it up. Explosives are very dangerous, young lady. And who is this Emily? She is my best friend, and a suffragette too. She was supposed to campaign with me tonight, but hasn't turned up. Have you any reason to be worried about her? Recently, Emily started to believe in... Well, she got interested in vampires. I'm afraid she might be in trouble. Let me guess. You spoke to her about us, didn't you? Despite your mother's warning. I think I should try to find your friend. Oh, that would be top-notch. I can tell you where she might have gone. You have my thanks, Dr. Reed. And please, don't tell my mother. What exactly has your mother told you about me? Your name and profession, obviously. And the mystery about your maker. I'm sorry to hear about what happened to your sister, sir. Mother says it was not your fault. Does it not scare you to know what I am? What your mother is? Why should it? My mother is the most compassionate woman. Must I be wary of her, Dr. Reed? Or you? Of course not. You have nothing to fear from me or your mother. Good to know. And don't worry, my mother told me everything I need to know about vampire tricks, their nature as well as features. Your mother is not like any other vampire I've met. I believe she thinks the same about you, Dr. Reed. Your mother has refused to turn you into a vampire. Tell me more about it. Each time we argue, Mother expresses the same fear. She wants me to remain alive and full of joy, rather than become melancholy and immortal. She claims you can't have one without the other. It's pure selfishness. It's your mother's choice. As daughters and sons, we have to accept the decisions our parents make for us despite our own wishes. I love my mother and have accepted everything from her. Even that she named me Charlotte, when it was not my original name. Does it bother you? No. Whoever I was when I was born, I am now Charlotte Ashbury. It hurts as much as it makes me proud to know that's the name my mother will read on my tombstone. Your mother has walked this earth for much longer than you or I. She is wise, and we should not ignore her advice when we disagree with it. But why shouldn't I be allowed to forge my own experience? There can't be only one righteous way to deal with eternity. Do you know why Lady Ashbury chose you to become her daughter? No, I don't. Each time I ask her that question, she smiles and says it's precisely because I dare to ask such questions. Do you ever regret that she chose you? Of course not. Though I often wonder if she adopted others before me. If so, where are they buried? How was it for them to pass through life with a never-aging mother? Why do you still hope to become a vampire in spite of your mother's refusal? It's the immortal aspect of vampires that interests me. The world won't improve unless women take charge. I'm convinced of that. You're obviously a clever woman with a good education and a brilliant future. But have you thought about the price you'd have to pay? The loneliness? The necessary masquerade? Is it not true of every high position? To change this world and make it a better place, one needs time on one's side. Tell me, Charlotte, how do you plan to achieve eternal life? Since you've obviously given it a lot of thought. I won't give up. You have no idea how determined I am, sir. I may contract a deadly disease. I may throw myself under a carriage just to be saved by her sweet kiss. That's a disturbing answer, young lady. And the worst part of it is, 
I know you speak the truth. There are less dangerous ways, Doctor. Instead of throwing myself under a horse like Emily Davison, I could just throw myself into you. Stop playing this game at once, Charlotte. This is unworthy of you, of your mother and of myself. I'm sorry, Dr. Reed. Please forgive me. That was stupid. Goodbye. She's been... Lui, je l'ai pas guéri, mais quelle erreur. Ils ont tous ça. C'est ça Do you need you would I... <coughs> Goodbye, Mr. Oh, Ma maman. Et mon vieux monde. Est-ce que l'âme c'est là non C'est là, c'est là. Okay. C'est parti. On va au club. Let's go to the club. Faire une partie de poker. Do you know where you are standing right now? In front of the Ascalon Club, I presume. The Ascalon Club only summons or ostracizes. What is your business tonight? I received an invitation. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, then, Dr. Reed. Please proceed. Lord Redgrave is waiting on you upstairs. Hmm? Qu'est-ce que c'est que ce bordel C'est fou le cadavre. Arthur Pumbleton. Ah voilà, ça c'est un pote ça. There has been quite a battle here. I'm sure the Ascalon Club has the money to replace the furniture. Est-ce que j'ai bien fait de faire ça Peut-être pas. Hein. J'aurais peut-être pas dû faire ça. C'est une grave erreur. Je suis juste sorti et ça va très bien. Je suis juste allé dans l'arrière-cour. L'arrière-cour. Euh, chargement à chaque fois que je vais passer la porte, ça va être un peu relou. Je parle à Arthur. Le Bascalon est une association de gentlemen qui vise secrètement à protéger les intérêts de la couronne. Je l'ai fondée en 1837 pour honorer et perpétuer l'héritage de mon créateur, William Marshall, premier comte de Pembroke. Et véritable protecteur de l'Angleterre. Tous les membres du club doivent posséder une bonne ascendance et des valeurs morales irréprochables. Puisque le club accepte les membres mortels, qui seront placés sous l'observation et jugés en tant que candidats à l'immortalité. 
Notre objectif est d'imposer des traditions et des conduites respectables au sein de la bonne société vampirique, mais aussi de promouvoir et étendre l'hégémonie de l'Angleterre. Nous sommes la véritable élite de société britannique. Nous sommes Ascalon, la sainte lance tenue par Saint Georges, protecteur de l'Angleterre, parce qu'il a terrassé le dragon. Nous, lanciers, faisons le serment de défendre les intérêts de l'Empire. Ah, ah, très très bien. Très 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 bien. Ah, attends, oh, il a bougé. Il bouge pas trop, s'il te plaît. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Doctor. Il veut pas parler. Très bien. Est-ce qu'il est dans les persos quand même Pas du tout. Okay, C'est comme s'il n'existait pas. Des petits tableaux. Ok. Si tout va bien. Et là, il y a deux personnes. Lord Huntington. Un, un, ouais, un, 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 un peu comme Huntington, mais Huntington. Ou Hutchinson, peut-être. Je ne sais pas. Pour l'instant, moi, je fouille. J'ai les clés du sous-sol, yes. On fouiller. Jusque dans la cave. La déco, c'est les jeux de cartes, on a partout. Ok, si c'est fouillé. My good friends, if I may have your attention. Behold our visitor, the good Dr. Reed. Newborn of blood so pure and strong that even my friend Fergal Bancher was no match for him. Here, here, here. here. Come forward, young Ekon, for we have so much to discuss. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. I am Lord Redgrave, Earl of Bristol and Chairman of this exclusive association. Lord Redgrave. At last we meet. I've been eager to make your acquaintance. I've heard some astounding things about you. Please accept my condolences for your loss, Dr. Reed. Thank you, my lord. Lady Asprey expressed your wish to meet me. Yes. The lady has always been a useful acquaintance, though not always reliable. Is she a good friend of yours? She has proved to be helpful on many occasions. Hmm. The centuries have taught me never to trust a woman completely, especially if she is immortal. Too prone to emotions, if you ask me. Too fickle when it comes to important decisions. My lord, do not expect me to speak ill of Lady Ashbury. Of course not, and I praise your loyalty. Would you offer the same fidelity to the Empire? What do you mean? I speak of this scowl plague that threatens London and the country. You have been on the front line in the East End, but the time has come to open up a second front here. The epidemic has escaped the quarantine. You have new cases of the outbreak. We don't know for certain, but we cannot allow the disease to threaten the prominent heads of Great Britain. Why do you suddenly need me? The Ascalon Club only recruits the best, and you definitely fit the bill. Your scientific and medical reputation alone would qualify you as a candidate. You want me to find possible sources of the outbreak in the West End? Is that it? Ah. Straight to the point, like all eager newborns. We shall have time to talk about all this, Dr. Reed. But first, I should like to get to know you better. Talk? Is that the only reason you asked me here? 
Well, no. I also wanted to meet the intriguing Ekon who made such a powerful progeny of his sister. You have not learned the name of your maker, am I correct? No, I haven't. Have no embarrassment, Dr. Reed. We all make mistakes. But whatever your lineage, you are definitely Ascalon material. What do you mean? I would like you to become a member of the Ascalon Club, and to serve me as such. Before I accept, I have so many questions. Please ask. What is the Ascalon Club's express purpose? We follow the credo of William Marshall, the greatest knight who ever lived. As was he, we are sworn to protect the British Empire. What does Ascalon mean? Ascalon was the lance wielded by St. George, glorious patron saint of England when he slew the dragon. And like that lance, we pierce the hearts of all our nation's enemies. William Marshall founded the Ascalon Club. Not exactly. William Marshall granted me immortality, and I founded the club a few years later. The good knight has been gone for so long. What does it mean? to be a member of the Ascalon Club. It means that you swear to protect the interests of the Crown, that you become a loyal servant of the British Empire. Do you have any official recognition from the government? A charter from His Majesty the King? No. Of course, the Ascalon Club publicly supports the Empire, but the true nature of its members remains a secret. Am I supposed to follow orders? As founder and chairman of the club, I alone am entitled to make demands of our members. And I do appreciate obedience. I killed Fergal, who claimed to be one of yours, sent to cleanse the East End of all Skulls. Will his death be an issue? Do not worry. My priorities have changed. Fergal was a zealous servant of mine, but like any servant, he had his limitations and is readily replaced if necessary. I agree to join the club. This is good news. Good news indeed in these crucial times. Let's inform the assembly formally and proceed with your initiation. My initiation? Fear not. Nothing fancy nor dangerous. It is just that we, the members of Ascalon, believe that tradition and custom are the backbone of this country. My fellow members, dear friends, please gather and welcome this Ekon as one of our own. Is he worthy? Is, Is his blood pure? Sure? Well, speak, Dr. Reed, in front of the most sacred blood. The blood of our beloved William Marshall. Speak now. Will you serve and protect the crown as he did? Yes, I will. Then, young Ekon, it is time to testify with your blood. It is time to sign the Book of Allegiance. I know it's awfully gothic and a tad pedantic, but England's traditions are the backbone of our nation. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. Take your place among the bearers of the lance. One of us! One of us! I personally went patrolling last night in the West End. Good evening, Dr. Reed. How does it feel to be this evening's centerpiece? 
Figuratively. It's quite unsettling. As a doctor, I am more used to being the observer than the subject observed. Do not be alarmed. The Ascalon Club has a tried and tested policy for choosing its initiates. May I ask who you are, sir? Why would you be interested? Well, as you seem to be the only man in the room with a beating heart, you draw quite a bit of attention yourself. Ah, vampire senses never cease to fascinate me. They dwarf those of mere mortals. I am Aloysius Dawson, by the way. Are you not afraid? You are surrounded by vampires. Sir, it's for that very reason that I joined the club in the first place. Is not the nature of this club a secret shared by only a privileged few? My dear Dr. Reed, I have spent years and a fortune precisely to gather that kind of information. So you asked for membership? I have been a member of many clubs in many countries. But I must admit, this one is my favorite. Are you a member of... Yes, I am. And I have been for many years. And will be until the day I die. What can you tell me about it? It's not really my place to give you such information. I am merely a mortal member, and a dying one at that. Are you sick? Personally, I consider my advancing years are a sickness in itself. My body is slowly abandoning me, Dr. Reed. What can you tell me about Lord Redgrave? I would not dare speak of our chairman without his consent. Mr. Dawson, of Dawson and Dawson the wealthiest man in England. It is a pleasure to meet such a prominent figure of London. A withering London figurehead, to be precise. Are you sick, Mr. Dawson? I am a doctor, you know. My case is beyond the scope of traditional medicine. I have spent fortunes on the world's most competent doctors to arrive at that diagnostic conclusion. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Should I suppose that you're here in search of some form of immortality? Absolutely not. I'm here to implement my plan to save the city I was born in. To cast out the ghastly evil that has us all on our knees. What is the situation like in this part of town? I am sure Lord Redgrave will enlighten you more effectively than I. What do you know about the Guard of Prewood? I should not say this. But I admire their commitment. This is what the nation needs right now. But they are our enemies. They are not mine, Dr. Reed. Would you help them? No. There is a time for such methods. But brute force will not be enough to fight this plague. We have to think differently. Money cannot solve every problem. This mysterious epidemic is going to require more than money can buy. You're right. Money is nothing unless one has the will to wield it. I have a plan, sir. A radical one that will save all that is essential in London. What is your plan, then? Quarantine and barricades are futile. What we need is a wall. A formidable, unscalable wall isolate the deserving from the infected masses. But that would segregate the rich from the poor, would it not? It would be unjust. Our only course of action must be to save England. And to save England, we have to make sacrifices. Are you not mistaking sacrifice for summary execution? Why do you care? Are you not a vampire? removed from all mortal concerns. Decisiveness is what the city needs, and it needs it now. Très bien, très bien. Attendez, attendez, attendez.
know we're facing a crisis. That went well, did it not? It is always useful to bolster the troops' morale, especially before a difficult battle. You have the makings of a general, my lord. I was, though very long ago. Well, not quite a general, but a proud defender of the crown. So why did you really want to meet me? Straight to the point again, young Ekon. All right, let's talk, you and I, Lance Sparrow. I'm listening, my lord. According to my spies, you have worked with Dr. Edgar Swansea on the epidemic, and your findings were quite alarming. You were spying on me? Not personally. I rarely leave this building. But once he found you, Fergal kept me informed. Until you put an end to his mission. Who was Fergal? I don't see him sipping tea with the others in the club. Fergal Bansha was my squire of sorts. Even before becoming that magnificent beast, he was a brute. He served me well for decades. No, I mean, what was he? He was clearly no ordinary vampire. No. He was a Volkod, all muscles and instinct. Quite the rare breed, ferociously territorial. Mortals often mistake them for werewolves. You do know I killed him? Yes. Will you bear ill will towards me for his death? Of course not. Your victory was quite impressive and courageous. You earned my respect. Do you know Edgar Swansea? Not personally. But I've been told he has some sort of immortal fetish, and is a good friend of yours. Does it bother you that I consider him my good friend? As long as you reveal nothing of the club's inner workings, why should I forbid you engaging in conversation with the good Dr. Swansea? Yes, I'm convinced the recent invasion of frenzied scowls in London is directly linked to the epidemic. This is not the Spanish flu, but something else. I would be glad to hear more of your discoveries, Dr. Reed. But for now, my main concern is the security of London's inhabitants, both mortal and immortal. What do you mean? Alarmed by the epidemic, the guard of Prewen has started a war against us British vampires. To appease the situation, we must eradicate the Skulls. Skulls are hostile vectors of contagion. That is a fact. But first and foremost, they are victims. I agree, Dr. Reed. Most of the new Skulls who roam the streets at night used to be good British citizens, but they must be put down nevertheless. So, what do you want me to do? I want you to investigate the city thoroughly. I have reason to fear there are cases of contagion in this part of town. Our absolute priority is to find and cleanse them. And how would you like me to proceed? By all means necessary, Dr. Reed. You are now a member of the Ascalon Club, and you have carte blanche. Interrogate the locals, follow all the leads you find, and get results. Mm, charm plus yes. Yes, yes, yes. On peut discuter Non, 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 c'est nul. Okay. Bon, moi, j'avais pas fini de fouiller, mais monsieur, messieurs, il me pardonnait. Oh, et mon reflet Non, c'est nul, hein Et un vampire, ça n'a pas de reflet. Erreur. Erreur du jeu. Pas d'erreur. Ah, une dague de qualité. Ouais, oui, je suis comme belle dame. Euh... Une porte là. Yes, c'est la clé que j'ai trouvée. Super. Qu'est-ce que ça m'emmène Ici. C'est une porte cachée là. C'est certain que c'est que des portes cachées, c'est full porte cachée.
En tant que membre du club Ascalon, nous essayons toujours de respecter les règles de savoir-vivre. Nous sommes à tout égard des membres de la bonne société, parfois même des personnalités publiques. Les orgies et les bains de sang ne nous procurent aucun plaisir, contrairement à ce que nos adversaires prétendent. Et si l'un d'entre nous se faisait surprendre à participer à l'un de ces actes immoraux et caricaturaux, nous lui jetterions l'opprobre qu'il mérite. Mais qu'en est-il du sang Qu'en est-il de son utilisation à des fins récréatives Comment nier l'extase que nous procure cette ambroisie écarlate Avec quel autre breuvage pourrions-nous lever nos verres Comment le fait, comme le fait, pardon, toute confrérie qui se respecte Pour répondre à cette question délicate, la ligne de conduite du club est la suivante. Tant que l'enveloppe mortelle originale n'est pas amenée entre nos murs, chaque membre est libre de boire ce que bon lui semble pour son propre usage ou pour partager ce breuvage avec des amis. Buvez ce que vous voulez, faites ce que vous voulez de l'enveloppe originale, mais jamais dans l'enceinte du club. À moins que je ne l'autorise personnellement pour les grandes occasions, bien évidemment. Et bien évidemment. C'est juste pour choper le texte. Voilà. It was just for the text. Pourquoi je démarque là Pourquoi j'ai histoire mon quartier C'est parti. Let's interroge gassionné les villageois ou là là allons parler à ces villageois euh. allons leur poser quelques questions quelques devinettes I think look Redgrave just suggested I was sired by an ancient vampire. Pour Whitechapel, non, parce qu'il y a le prêtre. Il y a 5. Ouais. Puis il y a le mec en noir, il faut que je fasse sa quête. Ici. Est-ce que 4 suffit Ah, 4 suffit à prendre tout ça, ouais. Mais ça permet pas d'avoir L. On va tenir notre 5. Et ici, bah, ils sont tous morts, hein, mais évidemment. Dégoûté. Parce que du coup, lui, on l'a pas vu. Et le H, je peux plus les bouffer. C'est 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 aussi. 5. Lui, j'ai pas pu le bouffer non plus. J'ai mis tous les indices et tout. C'est dommage. Good evening. And... I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual recently? A few days ago, I spotted a strange house while campaigning for women's suffrage. Awful smell. No answer when I knocked. Where is it? It's the Mullanies, a nice family who live in a big house near the park in the eastern part of this neighborhood. Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards. She's been quite busy these last few nights. Oh. 
parler à une personne, que ça suffit. La maison des Milnés. Vampire hunters sniffing around here. I need to find out what they're after. C'est là C'est la maison là C'est là. Ouais. Bon. Bah écoutez, on me dit dans l'oreillette qu'il faut arrêter. On m'a fait, fait signe. On m'a dit non. On m'a dit stop. Stop. Arrête de tuer tout le monde. Ne bois pas plus de sang. Nous allons donc nous arrêter là. Ce, 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 ce fut court pour une fois, tant mieux, ça change peut-être un peu, c'est peut-être moins lourd. Et bah ben écoutez, passez une bonne nuit, on se retrouve très rapidement pour la suite. Allez, bye bye